All right. Um, I want to say, uh, you know, God is good all the time, and all the time God is good uh, today. So, uh, again, a great opportunity for us to play a, a great football team this week. Uh, I want to first off and, and uh, stay our fans. I know you're going to be excited and ready to go. I know our student section going to break the record again uh, as far as having people here, over 7,200, 7,300 people maybe. I know the rest of our uh, fans are throughout the uh, – area, Lynchburg, Roanoke area. Hopefully they will come out here on Saturday night at 7 p.m. I know the weather already checked it. Uh, everybody at the weather stations, they are everybody saying the weather's going to be good, so everybody get ready to come on out and support the, the Liberty Flames this week as we uh, play a great opponent and also we have a good football team. Uh, before I get into Montana, quickly, uh, this West Virginia game last week, I thought that uh, the one thing I saw that we did improve on was the penalties, so I'm glad to, to, that did occur, that we did to get some things corrected. Uh, I thought that was a good sign. Then the other thing was that we did finish the game better. Uh, offensively there, being able to score some touchdowns there in the defense, I thought we tackled better toward the end of the game. And I thought that was a, a big plus uh, as we go into this ball game here, are some of the things that uh, from uh, West Virginia. Um, the Montana, uh, Bob Stitt, the head football coach there, uh, is a, a fellow Nebraskan. Um, I can't sit here and say that we've had a whole lot of conversation uh, but I definitely uh, know of him uh, and has done a lot of good things there in the state of Nebraska, there at Tecumseh High School, and then also over at Doan College, uh, where he had coached there also. And uh, great mind, uh, very uh, energetic, uh, very, very good uh, at knowing the offensive scheme uh, as they are uh, done a great job. They're already in the two ball games as being there as a head football coach, uh, obviously be the number one team in the country. Uh, their offense is doing well, defense is going well. Uh, and they're playing good football. They've already played two really good football teams uh, right off the bat there. So that tells you a lot about their team as they, they have done a good job. Uh, other thing about uh, him that is notable, uh, he is very aggressive on fourth down, whether it's fourth and four, five, six, seven. Uh, he could go forward at anywhere on the football field. He can go forward in a minus 25, minus 30. So uh, we're going to have to be alert, be ready to go, ready to play. Uh, that's a norm for him. It's not a shock. It may be a shock for us initially seeing it, but that's a norm for him uh, if he's got anything in there at fourth and five and six and seven, if he feels that he feels good about a play call. Offensively, they're up tempo. Uh, you know, uh, they're, they're going to be as fast. Uh, West Virginia, uh, we played some teams of this nature and all that, so they really try to even go faster. Uh, they're trying to get anywhere from 90-plus um, plays. Um, I know the quarterback there, Gustafson, he throws the ball really well. He throws the ball well even when he's under pressure. He gets the ball out. Uh, I've seen him do that all 6'5", six, 6'6", six, 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 whatever he is as far as that uh, very, very tall young man. Uh, he can throw the ball all the way down the field. He can throw the screens. They, 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 they really use all of the football field. In this attack, you know they'll throw it all the way to the sideline. They throw it 50 yards down the field, and uh, so they they do a great job of uh, spreading the ball out. Obviously, their stats <clears throat> speak for itself. The number three in the country, uh, as far as in passing yards, all just under 400 yards. Uh, they're right around 500 yards of offense, uh, and they have played two really good football teams, and they've been able to average 500 yards per game. So uh, that tells you that they really have done a lot of good things as far as that go. Defensively. Um, they're a four-man front. Uh, one thing that uh, I have seen is that they have a lot of seniors uh, on their defensive side of the ball. Uh, I think seven, eight, eight seniors on the team there. There's a few of them that played us when we played them three years ago. Uh, so I think they they got a good football team. They know how to run to the ball. Uh, I remember uh, Tiger Goriak was a linebacker there at Colorado of, uh, of all that. I know he's been there and done a good job there on the defensive side of the ball. So. Their defense is simulated. Uh, they got a lot of experience. They're running the football well, uh, and they know their scheme. They, they understand their scheme. When they have to blitz, they'll blitz, and they, they do a pretty good job with their secondary, their corners, uh, to being able to, to uh, cover people. Um, on the injured list, uh, Spicer is probable. Um, Kennedy, I know he didn't play a whole lot in the game, and he's probable. Uh, Kuman, uh, he is out for the season. He's going to have surgery next week on his knee. Uh, and so that's kind of the injury report. The keys to the game, uh, I think we got to score 35 plus points uh, to win the game. I want to see our offense 35 plus points here to, to do those things. Another thing offensively I, I want to expect us to improve on is third down conversion. We need to be 45% on our third down conversions. Defensively, we need to hold them under 17 points. Uh, that's what we need to get done uh, for us to be successful in this football game. And we got to tackle, continue to tackle well. 
Uh, it ain't been real horrible as far as tackling, uh, but key times here we've had some situations where we have missed tackles uh, in the last two ball games. So hopefully now we have two games under our belt. We play some good football teams, and, and we gotta we gotta really really play well this week. Open up to some questions. <coughs> Coach, their defensive line's been shuffled a bit. They had a few injuries in the first few games. They shuffled mm -hmm. the guys in and out. What have you noticed on film about those guys and the way they attack the ball and making sure you might be able to exploit that with your senior late on them? I think we're going to attack it, hopefully, being more physical than them. We, we have to have them to be trying to match our intensity, not us trying to match their intensity. Uh, I think if that's early on, uh, whether which team is trying to match somebody's intensity, I think that's going to tell you what's going on in the trenches, trenches as far as the offensive line and D line. Again, I'm talking both sides of the ball, offensively and defensively. Uh, again, it's going to be a good matchup. It's going to be a really good matchup because I think they got some strength. I think their biggest thing is they got good quickness and they can get off blocks and they can run uh, as far as their front four. They're not big guys, uh, but they're athletic and they can run and try to get off blocks. So that's how they uh, do their schemes. Coach, what do you feel like you learned about your team from the West Virginia game? What can you take away from that game that can help you this week against Montana? They're teachable. They're coachable. Uh, they learned from some mistakes in the first ball game, got some of those things corrected. Uh, that's always a good sign, uh, even though you, you may not win on the scoreboard, uh, but we, we made some improvement in a lot of areas. Uh, some young guys made some more plays, got a little bit better at some certain things. Some older guys, too, got better at some of those things of that nature, watching the tape. Uh, so our guys were coachable and teachable. So they were able to learn from a game and then to be able to improve. And, and when you have that, that's all you want. Every, every week we just say we just want to improve as a football team every week. And when you improve every week, uh, then you're going to become – uh, a very good football team as the season comes along. Coach, you got to play a lot of young players in the secondary against West Virginia, especially in the second half. How much did you see them grow playing against that up-tempo offense that will help you as you go down the line? You need to use that depth, you know, whether you know someone's not performing. Well, that's going to help, uh, no question, as we go through the season. Uh, guys have had repetition. We're not afraid to put them in. There's going to be bumps and bruises. There's going to be injuries that occur and, and all those kind of things. So they get this valuable experience uh, that we put them in a game. They can, they can perform. And uh, everybody really uh, – I didn't think we were necessarily overmatched uh, in, in any situation as far as in the West Virginia game, per se. And so that's, that's a good thing. Uh, again, some, some guys were freshmen, some were sophomores, and, and all that, they, they didn't get overwhelmed. Uh, and, and so I think that's going to be very advantageous for us as we move forward each and every week here as far as our, our guys continue to improve. Coach, with a, a Power 5 team last week, an FBS team, and then a top 10 FCS team this week, do you really see this kind of two-week window, regardless of, of wins and losses, as a, as a big chance for this team to show where they are as you get into the rest of the, the meet of the season? Well, again, we're going to show everybody who we are, no matter who we're playing. I can promise you that. Obviously, this, this just breezing, brings it up a little bit more exposure from a national uh, exposure aspect of it and, 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 and also each school um, and each football coach. We're, we're finding out a little bit more about our football team as we play each and every week. Are we able to play consistently week after week after week? And are we improving? on certain areas week after week after week. So uh, this is great exposure here for Lynchburg area, uh, college football, uh, everything uh, as far as it goes. We always want to play against the best, so it's a great opportunity for everybody here to, to get ready for a great and exciting football game and, uh, and also excited to coach it and to teach it. Uh, so it's a lot of fun when you're having these games. And I, I enjoy it every day, uh, coming to work every day and teaching and developing these young men and, and all that. So it's just great now to have maybe people come on out a little bit more uh, to see it. We got great fans, and I know our guys are going to be here in, in the cheer zone to help us to, to win this game. Coach, PDDJ limited a little bit in the second half. They're good to go. Good to go. Tight end position, Kendall out. What did you see, I guess, this past Saturday from that position, and kind of where do they need to kind of grow as the season progresses now that those guys mm -hmm. are the guys? Will Johnson and uh, Cannon Smith will be the main two guys getting majority of the reps. Uh, I thought they did a good job. Um, I thought Will Johnson maybe had one of his better games in both aspects. When I say both, I'm talking about blocking and also uh, pass receiving and, and route running and all those kind of things of that nature. So uh, it was good to see him improve. 
Cannon didn't have one of his better games, just watching on tape per se. And he didn't necessarily have a whole lot of stats anyway, but just uh, us watching the tape, it was just okay. And so he can improve. So that was a lot of more snaps he played. And uh, so he has to get uh, used to that and be able to perform at the level we expect him to perform at. So those will be our main two. Uh, you know, Meeks will get in there a little bit here as our third tight end if need be. Uh, so we're in good shape there. Everybody just got to step on up and uh, be ready to play. How do you encourage Lunsford bouncing back after missing three field goals last week? Well, he made the last one, so that's all he needed. He made he made the last one there, so I think that was a key. If maybe he didn't make the the last one, might have been a little bit tougher on him. Uh, but he's all good to go here now, and uh, so he he's good. Just to kind of follow up on that. After watching the tape, what did you see on the misses? Oh, just just miss striking it. You know, that's that's all. Uh, I think uh, I believe three of the kicks were into the wind a little bit, and you, you got to play into that a little bit of factor. It wasn't an issue on the distance. Uh, just had the little plays a little bit of factor on that. Maybe one of them, with the hold, wasn't at the spot where it needed to be. And obviously, uh, you know, if the ball's not at the spot where the kicker where he's expecting it to be, then he's not going to strike it as well. Uh, so some of that may be a little bit on our holder. But uh, again, majority of it is the kicker. Just got to made to kick it through and. And again, he's still a good football player, a good kicker, and uh, we're glad he's on our side. A Montana team that averages, you said, 500 yards a game. Are they as big of a challenge as uh, West Virginia was offensively last week? Uh, yeah, yeah, they're very similar. They're very similar. Uh, you know, they may not quite have the speed uh, overall uh, at the positions as far as uh, at West Virginia, but I mean, they're they're going to be a similar type of offense. Uh, you know, the same as West Virginia, you, you know, Coastal, three and four wideouts and all those things and up-tempo, they may be a little bit faster uh, than some of the people that we've played as far as what they're trying to get done. Uh, so we got to make sure we get lined up and all that. So we, we've faced all the up-tempo teams, so it's not anything uh, shocking that we're going to uh, be surprised at or anything of that nature. Uh, you know, it's just about execution. Kind of a good time <clears throat> to get them coming off the West Virginia team that, that runs that same type of style. You feel like your team's a little more well, I think it could be psychologically. Our guys have seen it and played it and been against it and all that. Everybody has a little different nuance about it uh, in their own offensive schemes. Uh, but just being able to line up and get in the up tempo, everybody now has been exposed to it on a game day. You know, even our freshmen and sophomores, those guys haven't played a lot, so uh, they're not going to be in, the, in shock of anything. The game's slowing down for them a little bit more and they're able to respond and react quicker to what they see and, 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 and being able to get the calls and being able to communicate. And a lot of it is communication. Uh, there's a lot of communication. A lot of people don't realize, even on the defensive side, uh, there's a lot of talking going on in the back end uh, from our corners to our safeties, safeties to the linebackers, linebackers to the safeties. As they're on the football field, they're making calls. And so uh, it's nothing like game day when you got to make those calls. They make them in practice and all that. But in the game day, and you know, it's not now you, in practice, you maybe took you about 15 seconds. You got to make it now in the game day. You got to make it in less than 10 seconds. And hopefully somebody hears you and you enunciate it in the right way because of crowd noises and all those things kind of happen too. Coach Montana's given up about 280 yards rushing a game. They've faced two very run heavy teams, North Dakota State and Cal Poly. With, with DJ and Dez back there, how are you, are you hopeful that they can get going after being stopped or you know, somewhat slowed down against West Virginia? Get those guys mm -hmm. going, uh, dominate the line of scrimmage, attack <clears throat> the point of attack, and really establish that to get going and maybe not put as much pressure on Josh to throw the ball around? Well, we're going to do what we do. We're, we're, we're a balanced offense. You know, we're going to run the football. We're going to throw the football and, and all that. We think we have some opportunities. We're going to have some opportunities in the game where we can exploit that, uh, running the ball and, and throwing the football there. We feel like we got good talent. We feel like we got good people that can match up with their people, including our offensive line against their D line, because that's where it starts, whether we're running the ball or whether we're protecting. I'm going to, uh, speaking about that, I want to say my offensive line, our offensive line last week did a great job of protection. Uh, so that uh, again, I think our guys are gelling together. Great to see Lucas Holder in there and doing a good job the first two ball games. So we're going to do our de do our deal as far as running the football, mixing it up, and uh, we'll we'll find some ways where we can have good matchups and and be successful. It's just one game, but how big mentally is this game for your team? Uh, the difference being one and two as opposed to two and one after week three. Oh, again, we don't get into all that a whole lot. Uh, again, obviously, it, it is what it is as far as the national exposure. Uh, I really uh, talk to them mostly about trying to improve individually. And then if everybody individually improves, then we're going to have a better football team. Uh, and I just really believe it. I've seen it uh, as a player, seen it as a coach. 
and I really believe in that if every week you really truly improve, you're going to be a better football team and you're going to be at the end, you're going to be where you want to be. Uh, but if we're not improving in some areas uh, overall, because we're playing solid, very good football teams week after week after week, and you have to do that. And uh, so, again, it, it is what it is as far as uh, what our record is, but don't get caught up into that because uh, we still have a long season to go. But right now we're focusing definitely on Montana, that's for sure, and we're going to be ready to play our best football game. Had some injuries on their side, I think specifically along the offensive line as well. Do you see anything on tape that makes you <clears throat> exploit something a little bit more? Or uh, what are your thoughts, I guess, on their <clears throat> Well, we, we're more interested in their scheme. When you start looking at individuals, then you're trying to see as an individual player, is there are certain areas that you can attack better on what a guy is. Does he stand up and he's high? Is he a guy that moves well or is he a guy that doesn't move well? Or uh, from a defensive perspective, an offensive line, uh, can I do more of a quick move? So there, everybody's now, we have them write down different notes on every single guy. What is their vulnerability? Uh, you you got to study. You got to study the game. So we're teaching our guys how to study the game so that they can become better. And when they do have a substitute in there, then, hey, you study that guy. And then what are his strengths? You know, what are some areas that you can exploit? Uh, so again, we, we each individual guy has that. And then obviously scheme-wise, uh, as our coordinator put together a game plan, we, we try to export some things. Um, sometimes guys make adjustments because they know. You know, we all know as individuals, you study yourself. Uh, here are my weaknesses. Here are my strengths. And sometimes the, a player may even improve uh, over a two or three game period in some of those areas. So uh, again, well, all of us as coaches, we try to look for certain things and, and you try to export them. Sometimes you do and sometimes you don't. Uh, just a little recap on West Virginia. Um, Thought we played good, um, missed some big opportunities. Um, definitely on the fourth and one with a with the option pitch, and then um, we had a, a drop that probably could have gone for a touchdown later in the game too. Um, and then obviously three field goals. You know we can't we can't have three missed field goals and um, just leave points on the field is a big thing. Uh, defense played good. They kept everything in front of them. gave us a gave us a chance to you know stay with them in the first half and uh, even possibly have a lead going into halftime. So. Um, I think the big thing for us is uh, moving forward from this game. Uh, you know, our, our playmakers and our big time guys are gonna, you know, need to step up in big time moments. You know, we can't just say, uh, "Oh well, I'll get that one next time," because against the FBS team like that, um, the big plays, you know, rare, rarely come against them when you're a smaller school like us. So when they do happen, we definitely have to capitalize on them. Um, we'll be better from from this team. Uh, good, they had a good defense and uh, they had good offense too, and they performed well, but. Um, you know, I thought we had a good chance to go in there and compete well and um, even win the game. We just had to capitalize on opportunities better. Um, going into Montana week, I uh, got a good defense, um, good defensive end, Tyrone, uh, Tyrone Holmes, good player. I think he's been a starter for four years. Uh, I know they got a safety transfer in from Arizona. Middle linebacker's pretty good. So um, we definitely, um, you know, got to bring our A game this, year, uh, this week. Uh, I think they're ranked number seven or number eight in the country, so this should be like a top 15 matchup. Um, good team. I like them a lot. Do some good things on offense, too. Defense is solid. Uh, got a great coach, so uh, it should be a really fun week for us. Josh, how would you see your careers kind of come full circle? You got your first start against Montana back in 2012. You get to play them again here as a senior. What's it been like for you? And I guess kind of seeing where your career's gone between games against them. Yeah, this game for me personally is uh I'm not going to say it's 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 obviously big, but it's exciting for me because this was my first official start was out at Montana for them and uh now uh, for my senior year, we get to play them home. So uh, for me, it's exciting. Um, you know, like you said, the growth and development that I've had over uh, the past four years has has been awesome, and uh, I'm really excited to go out there and just uh, you know have a good game and uh, lead our team to a victory. Is there one particular area you think you've grown in over those four four seasons that's really allowed you to step up and become a leader on this team? Uh, every area, football, leadership, coverages, throwing, every area has improved since freshman year. How, where were, did you see some improvement with the offensive line from game one to game two? And if so, kind of what did you see? Because they didn't get a lot of pressure on you. Yeah, absolutely. I'm uh, Like I said, I'm going to go back to the Delaware State game. And, you know, we didn't have a lot of film on them. So 
it was it was really hard to you know practice with them all week because honestly we didn't know what we were going to get we could have studied uh, for one thing all week and got something completely different so um, and then obviously it was the first game everyone's got some first game jitters so uh, offensive line played great in uh, in West Virginia didn't have a single sack all game so uh, they were able to keep them off me and uh, we did some good things with uh, you know pass protection and in run blocking. Montana's I get average giving up 280 rushing yards a game. They faced run-heavy teams. What have you noticed in preparing for them that allows you to maybe rely on Dez and DJ a little bit more or do some play action, try to get those receivers involved so that way you can force them to spread out a little bit more and give, you, give those guys more lanes? Well, I think the 280 yards rushing might be a little skewed right now because um, Cal Poly is is a run-heavy team, and I, you know they run the triple option out of the shotgun. So, um, be what it will with with that average, but um, they like I said, I, I I think they got a good defense. Um, definitely not a defense that gives up 280 yards. Like I said, I think that's skewed a little bit with with the Cal Poly game, but uh, yeah, you know we're, we're going to play our game. We're going to run the ball, and then we're going to have play action and spread them out when we need it to. So uh, nothing really is going to change for the game plan. We're going to have a great game plan going in this week, and it's going to be a good a good fun week for us. Kind of statement is this for the team to, a chance to go out and make a statement? How do, how do you view that? Uh, big time. Um, this this for us is is one of our big statement games. You know, um, last year we made it to the playoffs and got and you know we're nationally nationally exposed. And uh, so this for us is a statement game, saying that you know we're we're just as good and we're ready to be at the top of the FCS um, game with everyone else. So for us, this is a big time game and. Um, Hoping to have a lot of people here supporting us on Saturday. You made the trip out to Montana the first time, knowing what that's like and that distance. How much of an effect do you think it might have on them, especially coming back this way, where the, the time change is a little different? Uh, I'm I'm not sure how much of a of a difference it'll make. Um, big thing for when you when you travel across time zones and stuff is um, planning the planning your trips out good and then having good leadership because. Um, if your trip is planned out well and you know you can make up for those hours and whatnot, uh, the time change shouldn't really affect you. And then um, having good leadership also, you know, gets the guys going and lets them know that you know, hey, don't let you know this circumstance affect you or this time time change affect you. You know, be mature about it and just understand that you're gonna have to go out and uh, compete. You know, whether you like it or not. Either way, we're gonna be playing at seven o'clock on Saturday. So um, whether you're tired or whether you're not tired, you know, you're gonna have a chance to go out there and play. Josh, what have you noticed about Dez coming back from the injury and what he's been able to do in the first two weeks to really get himself acclimated back in the offense and try to make himself part of this team again after a great junior year and then missing last year when you guys made that run to the playoffs? Does it seem like he's playing again with a chip on his shoulder that he has something to prove and that he can be an integral part of this team? Yeah, he's always been that sort of player, you know, like you said, a guy who has a chip on his shoulder. So, um, you know, having him miss all last season, then he was able to play in spring ball. You know, gave him an opportunity to get reacclimated back into the offense, and so um, I don't see any any downslope or anything like that. I think he's done a great job so far, and he's going to have a good season this year. Coach was saying that you know the records you guys really don't pay attention to, and you know if you lose this season, you could be one and two. But it's about getting better individually and as a team. Is that really kind of the feel in the locker room that you guys could really overlook being one and two if everyone is getting better and and moving forward? Well, I think um, the ultimate goal is to make the playoffs. So when you when you look at at a team like this, you know this is a big game for us because as competitors and as a team, we don't want to lose a single game. But um, in the grand scheme of things, if this game helps us be better for the playoffs, then um, that's the ultimate goal is really getting into playoffs and playing well in the Big South. But um, from a team perspective, you know we don't want to lose a game. We want to win this game. We want to show everyone else in the country that you know we're a powerhouse this year, and, and we're going to be um, big time when we get into the playoffs this year. Not having PD in the second half, do you feel like that uh, you were able to kind of establish a little bit of a connection with some of the other younger guys, and do they kind of show you a little bit to maybe build and develop that trust a little bit more? I think it was uh, I think it was pretty good for us because we were able to spread the ball around a little more to, to different guys because we couldn't just you know feed Petey the ball. But um, Petey is a great player and you know you can't really replace him. But it was really good for us to be able to spread the ball to BJ and Parker and uh, and Dante so that they can get 
uh, you know, more cushioning and, uh, you know, some more reps in, in game scenarios because you can always go out there and have practice practice reps, but, you know, when the lights are on, you're out there, you know, hitting another team and you don't know exactly what to expect like you do from a, a compete team or a scout team, uh, it's a little different. So timing's always a little off and everything. So it's good to get them a little more timing with me and some actual in-game reps. Josh, offensively, what was your biggest takeaway from the West Virginia game? What were you most pleased with and maybe an area that uh, you felt, felt like the offense was lacking? <laughs> Uh, I didn't think that we um, we backed down from them at all. You know, yeah, they're a Big 12 opponent, but um, any guy on the offense can say that. You know, we weren't intimidated. We were just as big, just as fast, just as strong. So there wasn't any sort of fear. And our our word last week was courage for for the week. So you know, I thought everyone um, displayed some courage the whole game. You know, we we weren't afraid of them just because they're a bigger school. We weren't gonna, you know, oh, well, you guys are better than us, so we're just gonna not play well on purpose. But um, so I, I was really pleased about that. I thought everyone kept their poise, especially in that environment. And then the biggest thing that um, going forward, learning from that is, like I said, we just have to capitalize on uh, on the times that you know we have some big plays because you know big plays are hard to come come by, especially against a good defense like West Virginia. And then, like I said, Montana's got a pretty good defense. So when big plays do happen, we um, you know as an offense, whether it's it's a throw from me, a catch from a receiver, or a run from a running back, um, you know, we definitely have to make those in big time scenarios. Coach Gill on his teleconference today reiterated something he said post game from West Virginia that when you guys get in position, you can't sell for field goals, you have to get touchdowns. And how much have you guys stressed in the few days in between to really, you know, make those big plays and understand the importance of finishing drives in the end zone instead of having to rely on John Lunsford to help maybe win a game? Yeah, that's going to be a big emphasis, especially this week. Um, we hit on it a little bit during uh, on Sunday, but um, I mean that's that's our whole our whole thing. That's our that's our saying this year: is touchdowns, knockdowns, and first downs. You know, it doesn't say anything about getting field goals in that saying. So um, we need to focus a lot better on when we get on the plus fifty on their side of the field. We need to you know be able to put together a stronger you know impact as far as going into the end zone rather than just settling for a field goal with John because. Um, you know, John's a great kicker, but you never know, just like Saturday, you know, he could be one for four. And, you know, that we don't want to have to put that pressure on him. Whereas, you know, if we could only had him kick one field goal and we scored three touchdowns, the whole game would have been a little different. And, um, you know, the whole we would have been talking about something else right now. So um, this whole week is going to be focused on, you know, mainly getting once we get into the red zone, making sure that we get touchdowns instead of field goals. Um, going back to the West Virginia game, I think the biggest thing is, uh, we played well. We came to play. We did what we needed to do. Uh, we got a lot of props from their coaches. Uh, I know it was just a moral victory, but <clears throat> we got a lot of like we got a lot of positive sense from their coaches saying how well of a defense we are and how we had them on the edge. So that's that's good. That, that gives us a lot of confidence going into this Montana game. We know we have a lot to do. And then um, going into Montana, I think. We're ready. We're gonna be ready. Our coaches are gonna do a great job of correcting us from what, from West Virginia and um, just giving us the game plan and and putting everything in. Your team, you got a chance to break the uh, Big South sack record this week. All you need is, uh, I guess, a half sack. You know, uh, what uh, what goes through your mind when you think about having that record? Uh, it's there. Uh, It'll be exciting, you know, not just for me, but I mean, it's a play that helps our defense. You know, stacking a quarterback uh, that that helps us out a lot. So. What do you notice about the Montana uh, offense, especially the line that you guys might be able to win some battles in the line of scrimmage, force their quarterback, who's six foot seven, try to make him move around more instead of being more comfortable in the pocket? Um, they're all long. They're they're very long. You know, very athletic. But I think we we are also athletic. We're very athletic, um, and we've shown that we can we can get to the quarterback. I think just keep doing what we're doing and keep um, putting pressure on. How important will it be for guys like Will and Javon there at the defensive tackle position to get some pressure up the middle, to you know, so, so that way you guys on the end, uh, Javon there at nose guard, don't get double, triple team, and that way you create some pressure up the middle and force them to, you know, defend you guys more along the front to give you guys probably a better pass rush. I think it'll be very important. I mean, as an inside guy, you have the the shortest and distance from the quarterback, and I think um, them getting pressure and them uh, doing dominating early on will help out everyone else. Getting a 
a fast tempo offense last week into a fast tempo this week? Did it, does it help that transition knowing it's, it's not going to be quite as much of a, a shock this week? Oh, yeah, it definitely helps us with our confidence. We know we'll be ready. Gee, what kind of a statement game potential potentially is this for, for you and the team? Uh, it's it's, it's going to be a, a, a big game, you know. Uh, we try not to treat it as bigger than any other game, you know, not bigger than the West Virginia game, not smaller than the West Virginia game, you know. But we know that this will be a game that puts us out there. You're one of, I think, five or six players who got to play in Missoula back mm -hmm. in 2012. What do you remember about that game and where you guys have come? You know, in the three plus seasons since then, against a against a perennial FCS contender, uh, we've come a long way, a long way. Um, I just remember it was just that atmosphere. You know, um, the memories I have of that—it was like it happened yesterday. Um, just very foggy and. And, you know, going out there and me being a freshman, the you know, confidence was low, you know, going out there. And I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, but as a defense as a whole, as a team as a whole, we've come a long way and we'll be much better prepared for them this weekend. Kind of following up on that trip, I asked Josh the same thing about making the trip out there. What kind of an effect does it have on you physically? And what do you, what do you think it might do to them having to come back here, you know, going against or going the other way with the time? I th it creates a drag. It definitely does. You know, it's a three-hour difference. So uh, they're coming down here, which is three hours later. So um, they're going to be tired. They're going to be dragging. And I think for us, that would be an advantage for us. But we still don't We don't take it lightly. We still don't go out there and play our best. Chiba, two weeks ago, the entire team experienced the team walk up University Boulevard. What was that like? It was exciting. Uh, it was uh, it was the first time we got to do something new. Try to trying to add another tradition to you know Liberty Flames. Uh, it was fun. It was exciting. Anything else for uh, Kima? Kima, knowing that this team likes to throw the ball a lot, uh, what's the mindset of the guys on the front line? What do you, what are you uh, telling yourself? What do you know you have to do in order to uh, lead the defense? Um, this team, they like to get the ball out quick, you know, so a lot of things we'll do this week. It'll be a lot of, you know, trying to get in the face of the quarterback, trying to get our hands up and get the ball out. What did it do for you guys, the way that you were able to go out there and force a couple of field goals early on against West Virginia? What, what did that do for you? Oh, it showed us that we're a strong defense, you know. Um, we bend but don't break, you know. We give up a play here and there, but in the end, we, we slow them down and we, we keep them we keep them to three points, and that's the biggest thing. Do you think the game plan will be a little bit the same this week, just trying to keep it in front of you kind of a thing? Yeah, I mean, Coach Wimbo will do a great job of, you know, game planning, like I said earlier, and we'll just go out and be ready to play.